the cybersecurity capabilities at Twitter have been greatly reduced now. So your, your private messages, anything that you're doing on that platform is now more likely unsafe, likely to be stolen than it was six months ago. So that, that's something to think about. Similarly, um, the disinformation teams have been removed. And so the, the, um, the, the types of actors that'll be now using that platform to push uh, misinformation, malinformation, disinformation is much higher. And if people are starting to get a lot more trolling and, and spamming or, or they're being targeted because they put up a paper, maybe it was a paper about vaccines and now they're getting all these horrible DMs, people should really kind of um, self-police and I would advise a low threshold for getting off, meaning like the first time somebody sends something that's actually very threatening to you, you, sh you should archive your data, log out, and start thinking about whether or not you should log in again. It's just not worth it. A lot of people are saying, I'm not going to be driven off Twitter. Ethically and responsibly, there's, there's a case to be made for that because, because then it just becomes another really large effective disinformation channel if nobody's on there speaking truth. But who who will win in the end? The community that grew up as Med Twitter, which which we were all a part of, is is going to probably move or evolve either onto other platforms or just just change what it's doing in general. One thing to remember about all these is that these are all quote unquote free services, but nothing's free on the internet. These these uh, platforms exist because they sell ads. Probably the most successful of all these to me is YouTube. People don't even think of YouTube as a social network, you know. But when you're searching for something and you find exactly the video, you don't care that it's nine years old. <laughs> it's exactly the video you wanted to see. And so the, the, it has a, like a longevity and a process. Also, because it's kind of owned by Google, it tends to show up really high when, when you search for things. I would be creating a really strong YouTube presence. And I would really mostly use any other platforms, whether it's Twitter or Mastodon or whatever, to, or LinkedIn to amplify that presence, but, but drive people back to that, that home base. Because then you can, you can be multi-platform and just at the end of the day, if Twitter blows up, you just cut off that thread. What's interesting about TikTok is it's, it's the one thing that I think legitimately competes with YouTube with younger people, 100% owned by a nation state actor that's known to be hostile to the U.S. on the internet, right? We know this. You know, it wants to be that next big thing, but I don't, I'm not 100% sure how that grows as a business without some of those algorithms. You know, how are they actually going to make money? Would people spend $8 and $9 a month to be on Mastodon if it had all through Twitter? Some people might, you know, but some, but some people wouldn't. What is the value of a peer-reviewed publication in a journal versus an op-ed in the New York Times? People are thinking about tenure differently now. They're thinking about reach differently, right? And so I, I, I think these avenues are important, especially as you go to younger and younger kind of faculty and professionals. So hopefully, you know, safe avenues would be there. But I think in general, people need to know how to download their Twitter, their data, you know, and, and know how to get off platforms if, if they start to be harassed on those platforms. There's ways to do it where you're greatly minimizing the overlap of that social media footprint with your own, with your personal digital footprint, which is, which is what I would advise against. It's never wrong for people to think a little bit more about cyber hygiene. You know, talk to who you know, talk to your ISO, um, say, you know, what, what would be a guide for this? You know, could you put together a three by five card that I could give my team on how we could be safer on, on, on TikTok, you know, whatever, I think they'd be happy to do it.